ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Killer Collab Podcast. My name is Tony Deffens Lawrence, Tony D. And straight across from me, we have Mr. Chris Lato. What's up? What's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm good. I'm, good. I'm tired. This 10 a.m. stuff is for the birds. Yeah, I love it. Because it doesn't take my whole fucking day up. How does an hour take up your whole day? Dude, an hour turns into like three hours. I get here, I leave at 9.30, and I usually get home at like 1 o'clock. Because uh-huh. the show runs like an hour and a half, and it's already you're so 10, dr- 13. You're so dramatic. I know. You, you, to do. do you, though? Yeah. You really do nothing. I do you nothing, don't have a job. I'm very busy. Your girl doesn't like you. Like, I, I don't know what, what's going on here. <laughs> I do nothing, but I'm very busy. Yeah, that makes no sense to me. And today, we have a special guest, Mr. Ryan Justice. How are you guys doing? Doing all right. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, no problem. So, what... Wh- I know you wanted to promote uh, a certain uh, movie that you have on, that you've been on some daytime television shows. Uh, what shows have you been on? So I've been on Morning Blend. I've been on Daytime Live, and right now it should be live, as we are speaking right now, on NBC's uh, just daytime uh, right now. Okay. And so, yeah. All right. Do you like doing those shows? It's fun. I kind of um, like them too. They're cool. They, what was what I, I really liked uh, the CBS one because uh, they had the battleship that we filmed at. They were there promoting their uh, haunted show, a haunted like ship thing. Right. And then they had Tampa Theater was there promoting their uh, Nightmare on Franklin Street stuff. Right. So it segued into ours, and they actually had a more produced show where like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna come around and scary in the green room, right. act scared. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I wasn't expecting to act today. That's cool. And it's more live. There's just more energy when you're doing it live. Right. Because every, yeah, because the other ones were like, hey, um, you guys sit here. We're going to film this. And we'll do this. And we were, yeah, it's just kind of more produced yeah. on the, the other show. Yeah. Right. See, live, um, I guess because it, it passes time more. I also, like, it doesn't feel like you were there for a long time. Like, because it passes. There's a lot of things going on. It's like this, 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 this. They're right. cutting to this. They're cutting to that because it's live. They got to live produce it. So I, I think it's a, it's a harder show to produce, but it, when it's done, it's actually it looks really good. Right. It looks more genuine, I think. You know yeah, what I mean? have that's what it felt. Because we the one we were doing on Friday that's airing right now, uh, they had technical difficulties, so they pushed us. So we're sitting there on the couch while they're interviewing uh, the author from that new Netflix show, Youngest or sorry, Luckiest Girl Alive. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they they were doing they were doing all these press things. That were supposed to be scheduled after us, but we had to sit there and kind of listen to him. And then the uh, the guy from Thirty Rock, the big teeth, smiling guy, he has his own like kid show. And so they were they were piping in and saying, "Hey, you guys, this man waiting. We have to do these. <laughs> these are time." Right. So we're like, "Okay, yeah, we'll wait. We'll just listen to him." <coughs> then there was a guy from the Bachelorette. Know. I guess it was uh, Alan after us. The new Bachelor. Yeah, the new Bachelorette. He was, I guess, he was in the top ten. His name was Jordan. So mm-hmm. there was a nice little mix of people there. Uh, the last few were like all doing the. the morning shows yeah so it's kind of cool to see all the local celebrity people so huh. interesting very cool i don't know why they would like crunch all that in one like like segment yeah like right. little time period like yeah it's one episode so that's whole one whole show so that's yeah. wow yeah wow pretty cool how so long what are sh- you promoting so uh the movie uh that just came out came out september 30th is the wild man it's kind of a bigfoot thriller horror that we shot right here in the Tampa Bay. very nice we, we we don't get any uh, big time like we, we don't get like a lot of movies. Well, we get a lot of movies, but they're all like lower budget. Hallmark. Yeah. Um. So when we're bringing in like larger movies, which we're trying to attract, uh, what do you think is like the biggest hurdle that you have to jump over to bring a, like a, such a project here to take care of, take on? Well, the, I think the biggest thing is once again is that what all filmmakers deal with is finance, money. Uh, yeah, money. Uh, you know, we shot this movie during the pandemic. Um. It, you know, when when every the world shut down in March 2020, uh, me and my other kind of creative team, Sean Michael Gloria, and my other co-producer Ian Lange, we were like, well, we're not doing anything for a few months. We have no video gigs coming in. Uh, let's take the time to start building business plans. Let's it's funny because that's what we all like. We made two movies during the pandemic. Yeah, we did. We made Naked Cannibal Campers and Zed's Dead. Yep. And it was just like small one location type stuff, and it was actually really fun. We had a good time doing them. Yeah, we were reaching out to, you know, emailing all those AFM contacts and all the different things, you know, the people we had met. Uh, earlier in the year, that year before everything hit, um, the Jabba Brothers hosted a, a local networking event 
uh, Hacking Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, just that. right before everything hit. Let's be real, it's probably a super spreader event. We don't even know. Right? <laughs> uh, so, probably. you know, met some contacts through there, and we had everything ready. So we sent a bunch of pitch decks to a couple different investors. And at first, you're like, oh, those may be too big of our budget. What else you got? I'm like, have you ever heard of the Skunk Ape? And they're like, I, I'm hearing you wrong. Are you saying Skunk Ape? I'm like, yeah, Skunk Ape is the Florida Bigfoot. Uh, we had this project we've been kicking around since like 2014. Let me let me put something together and send it over to you. And you know what? They liked it. They're like, you guys can shoot this in September. I'm like, yeah. And uh, just like you know, <clears throat> Ernie Ernie Hudson. Yeah. If they ask you if you're a god, you say yes. Mm-hmm. And so if they say you can shoot it by September, you say yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, so that's one of the biggest things is like uh, we put it together pretty quickly. Uh, that was with the help of Film Tampa Bay and all those people. They were able to give us bigger locations set in stone. Um, and then we had the creature designed by Derek Garcia, who works on Doom Patrol. His brother just got an Emmy uh, helping uh, work on Vecna and Stranger Things. So they weren't working like a lot of people weren't working in the country. Yeah. And uh, they were able to – I let him have a lot of creative control. My like, hey, this is what we're trying to do. Here's some, like, images. We wanted to make this thing scary, original. Um, maybe big fit, Bigfoot enthusiasts might not like the way we went with it uh, creatively, right. but I think it's pretty scary. If you saw it in the Florida woods, you wouldn't want to have a beer with it or oh, yeah. snap into a Slim Jim, <laughs> but you would you would run from it. Um, and so that's you know we, we put that all together during the you know pandemic, and you know it was you know we had a, a decent sized crew and cast. We, right. we checked temperatures, we wore masks as much as we could. Um, we tried to be as safe as possible. Well, it's the best you can do at that time. Yeah. Because there was a lot of scare, a lot of fear uh, about that time. Like, there was a certification that we had to follow, uh, that we had to get, like a certificate to do, like... Uh, yeah, our certification on Naked Campbell Campers was, do you have COVID? Yeah. No? Okay. <laughs> do you have COVID? No? Okay, let's make a movie. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and it was, it was a cool thing because, uh, you know, yes, we were trying to be as safe as possible, um, but also we were employing people right yep. during this time. You know, we, we gave people, we gave actors, you know, their, you know, uh, money. You know, we gave crew money to you know work come work for us, um, and it was it was cool. We got to you know filming in Plant City, filming these huge you know big locations, Mosey, right. USF Camels, Battleships, all this stuff. You know, we were able to give that money into the community. Right. Absolutely, super cool. What's yeah. your plan with the movie now? Like, I know you did a you did a little premiere yes. last weekend. Yeah, so we just did our kind of one of our last real public screenings um, in Tampa. Uh, the hurricane kind of screwed us up. We were supposed to have it on the 29th, the day leading into the digital release. We had to push it another week. Right. Um, and now it's it's out there on Amazon, Apple, Google Play, everything like that, and then to rent and buy. And then I think at the end of this month, we're, we're planning a double feature screening in, in downtown Plant City, like a midnight showing, um, partnered with... What's uh, in Plant City? They have, like a, like a, they have, like, a, they have like a last, uh, a last Friday Halloween event where... I guess they have like they expect like five thousand people to be out there. Oh, okay. and we're gonna set up the tables and maybe sell some Blu-rays. Uh-huh. Uh, and then they're gonna they're gonna do a do our movie at midnight because it's a little less family. Is it like friendly. outside or inside? I or? guess it's outside. You got like a big blow up screen. Or that's something? that's that's the word. Yeah, that's cool. um, the other that film that's uh, they're they're showing with ours, the Beast comes at midnight. That uh, yeah yeah. Also, uh, Pre- uh, Michael Prey was also in um, with Eric Roberts, and that's gonna show before ours. Um, so because we both filmed kind of in Plant City. At the, in Lithia area, so that's why they're kind of putting our films together. It's funny because I think we're trying to get McKeever on the show, and I yeah. was like, "Hey, wait, let's just get Ryan Justice and just release the movie too." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I talked to Todd, uh, Todd and Ed are pretty cool, and so I chat with them a little bit. Um, yeah, so that and then we're we're planning on we're, we're actually nowadays it's what's frustrating is you know four years ago our first feature followers had a DVD release, theatrical release right. all through the distributor. Now. You know, cutscene four years later, we are actually are producing yeah. our own Blu-rays, and uh, we should ha- hopefully they'll be ready in the next couple of weeks. Start from you know, because I think Bigfoot enthusiasts really like you know physical. Uh, so yeah. we did we physical did some, de- we did yeah. some de- people that like physical media, right? So yeah, yeah. That's what we pray like we that's our fan audience. Don't say you pray on. Well, <laughs> pray on. I'm just saying that's <laughs> who we we need those people. No, yeah, absolutely. That's really. One of the few ways you can make money now right. is by selling. Well, DVDs. that's why the conventions are so popular because people are able right. to get people like memorabilia, DVD, Blu-rays, posters, uh, just in general, like yeah. like movie movie stuff, like just from the movies or yeah. action figures, um, stuff like that. Yeah, we've had a lot of fun. I, I, you know, I what I like about 
the Bigfoot movie is like we have a lot of fun marketing things that we can do. We were able to take um, our Bigfoot uh, around downtown St. Pete last year after our cast and crew. We took him around University of South Florida in Tampa last week, kind of doing some viral marketing, taking photos with all the students. It was really fun. And then um, we, you know, we put on the suit one more time. We went in a world of beer. And the, the manager was like, oh, can we get a, you know, a big cr- uh, crew uh, employee picture? I'm like, yeah, it's cool. We're going to put the newsletter. So the things that you can do with a horror film, you can't do it with like right. a, a drama. A comedy. Yeah. A drama, unless, you know, there, there's something to it where there's, there's, uh, there's some fun aspects to marketing that you can do. And us having the monster suit, uh, the, the only downfall is it only fits that person. Oh, yep. So wow. Tim Beddinghouse, who um, not only was our gaffer on the film, is our Bigfoot. He's right. you, you know uh, he he's not a he's not really an actor. I make him an actor all the so time. So it's custom made just for him. Yes. Wow, yeah. That's awesome. So we had to go up there about a month and a half before filming to get him uh, up to Atlanta where uh, uh, Derek's uh, workshop was, and you know get all the blue stuff and the, mm-hmm. this and wrapped and you know. Uh, you know, he never, Tim never did that. Who made the suit? That's Derek, Derek Garcia. Oh. So Derek and Eric Garcia, um, uh, Red, Redwater, I think they're Redwater. Are they right? local? No, they're, they're in Atlanta. Oh. So they're originally from Orlando. They grew up, they, they were on Sci-Fi's, he was on Sci-Fi's Face Off, and, um, they, uh, they helped do the Dorothy character on Doom Patrol, hmm. and yeah, they do a lot of really cool stuff. Um, so I, I met him through iHorror, Anthony mm-hmm. at iHorror. Because uh, I'm like, hey, you know, there's a guy you've worked with. I'm like, can you connect us? We're, we're trying to build this really awesome suit. Right. And, you know, he's, you know, walked us through what we were able to do, you know, buying the fur, doing all this stuff, you know. And he was really into it. So he was, you know, he started sending me, like, kind of uh, mock-ups of what are you thinking. I'm like, that's cool. Right. That kind of looks like Predator. I dig that. So, you know, our monster kind of has a very Predator feel with, like, dreads right, right. and yeah, I've seen gnarly teeth. Really uh, and then so Tim, I, Tim, I've been working with for over 10 years now and Tim was, you know, he's the tallest, leanest guy I knew right. who I could trust the most. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you're going to come up to Atlanta. You're, you're going to, he's always kind of into that craziness like once in a lifetime opportunity type of stuff. So he, you know, came up to this Atlanta, his, his soon to be wife at the time he was like, yeah, let's go. She, she was there, you know, taking pictures while he's getting all this blue junk and wrapped like a mummy. Uh, to get fitted into the suit. Um, and then two months later, I'm like, I need you to be able to show up right. and be in the suit. And then I give it 110% running around in the suit, you know, and fighting, killing soldiers That's and scientists so cool. and people and running through the woods. And he did it. And then, you know, he didn't know for, you know, two years later, I'm like, hey, can you uh, go to this trade show or can you, can you walk around? <laughs> can you walk around the University of South Florida? Uh, you know, because he, he, uh, he was just doing, uh, he was just working on that uh, Vince Vaughn Apple TV show down in Miami for like the last six months. Oh, wow. So I've been waiting for him to come back. So I'm like, hey, I hope you can still fit in the suit because right. you're the only one that can. Uh, he's like, yeah, I don't know. I've been on set for like a year straight. Hopefully, they were eat- I was eating healthy. Yeah. You're going to find out. Uh, <laughs> but he got right into the suit. You know, the biggest thing is the contacts. We have these really these awesome hand-painted contacts that I was like, man, I hope they still last. They're two years old. Right. Uh, I mean, for six hundred dollars a piece, you hope they're hope gonna they last. last more than two years. Oh, yeah. yeah. So those are the those are always the toughest things to put in. Um, but they they're huge because the takeover is alive. Oh. But those are those. So we we put all that in. Uh, you know, he was able to do that last week. So that's um, cool. Yeah. It's, what do you do with the suit now? Now it's well, it's actually <laughs> it's sitting on our uh, the the other makeup artist is Carl Hoover. Carl Hoover is actually doing some touch ups on it in case we want to take it out one more time right. later this month. I think I know him. Did, yeah. Did, yeah. Carl. Yeah. Carl's it, was a, awesome. it was a joke. It was a joke. Yeah. Carl, <laughs> Carl did a lot of the, um, some, a lot of blood effects and like squibs and stuff like right. that on the movie. Um, and then he would do some touch ups on the mask and the pre, cause we couldn't bring Derek back for some of the reshoots. Mm-hmm. So Carl would kind of do some touch ups to the masks and the right. suits and some more blood effects. Yeah. I like Carl. Good dude. Oh yeah. Um, so what are you going to do with the suit? Like after you're done, well, it's, it's, it's well, I, I, it no, we're, I, you know, or? the biggest thing what we want to do is well, a, um, when we've been trying to talk it into existence, is actually a prequel. Mm-hmm. Um, when we were doing all the research for this movie, uh, one of the mo- one of the first stories and legends of the skunk cave here in Florida is called the wild man of Luchesa pond, where this group of like villagers in, in North Florida, um, went out. And hunted this thing down. They mm-hmm. thought it was some man, and they captured it. And then they brought it in, and they sent it to the asylum in Tallahassee, 
mean, it sounds like this is he's not ours. And he ended up, this <laughs> this they, isn't a man. Yeah, they they it, it, you know the years later, um, when because there was like a published story in the New York Times about this this creature right. or this this person who was hairy and didn't speak English. Uh, years later, like oh, that was probably a Bigfoot. So there's a lot of legends around that. So we're actually tying and trying to create a um, kind of a Western prequel. Right. And what's really cool is when that story happened um, in North Florida was the same year that the trains came to Tampa, the train station. So we're building a story around the industrialization of Tampa around. Oh, that's old. That's a long time ago. It's called The Wild Man 1883. That's wow. our working title. Mm. Um, so we'll play on Yellowstone there. Um, <laughs> but it's it's a cool. We're mixing a little bit of Ghost in the Darkness um, with yeah, Predator and also that where we have a, like a posse of you know local Tampa people going out there to hunt this these right. creatures down because. It's it's uh, interrupting the flow and the building of the railroads from Orlando to Tampa, and um, there's some uh, some kind of same themes that we have in our original uh, Wild Man movie that I like. But this one will open up to not only more action but more uh, more Bigfoot. It's obviously not going to be found footage. It'll be no, it'd be narrative. Movie. Yeah, on a, on a, on a, that, that that sounds like it's going to be a lot more money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're trying to figure out how the best way to do it. Um, there's obviously some western towns here, and then there's there's plenty of woods. Dry Creek. Yeah, Dry Creek actually got uh got some damage done from the hurricane. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, mm-hmm. they're, they're out there they're out there building rebuilding some of the stuff. Um, but yeah, we we're looking at that. There's a couple other places, but the biggest thing is like, I want to do something kind of coolly narrative, and I in the western genre is kind of booming right now with right. prequels and sequels and like uh, TV shows right now. So we're I, I you know it's something I've always wanted to do. So people, you know, now is kind of a, a fun time to make maybe a genre bending western. Right. So Ooh, I, I haven't really, I, I've never seen a western Bigfoot movie. Me um, yeah, I so <laughs> I think I, I think somebody's like, oh yeah, they did that in the Red Dead Redemption game. You can fight Bigfoot or something in one of the Red you Dead. You can actually, like, yeah, you right. Can. There's like a, there's like I saw you know, when awesome. Google when Googling that came up. Uh, I'm like, I'm like western Bigfoot, and then that there's a whole like play sequence on YouTube. You also have it in um, Bigfoot's also in. Uh, um, what's the big game of uh, five? The game that's been out for like fifteen years. Fortnite. Yeah. Oh, Minecraft. No. Fortnite, um, uh, the Rockstar game. Grand Theft Auto. Uh, yeah, Grand Theft Auto. Twenty years. So yeah, Grand Theft Auto Five, right. but they have a Bigfoot segment in there as well. You, there's also add-ons that you can actually be Bigfoot. In that in game, you're, you're Bigfoot stealing cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they have. Well, there's a lot of things that you can do on the computer. You can actually be other characters. You could be you know, Flash, um, right. uh, Iron the, Man. Is the computer version of the game? Yeah, yeah. You you, you can't you can't um, do mods in the PS5 or or the uh, Xbox, but you can do mods in the computer game, the PC game. No, so you can you can mod anything on the computer now. So yeah. yeah. I know when I when I sell like game systems, people are like, "Is this a mod?" And I'm like, "I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Like, what are you saying to me right now?" Yeah, on PC gaming, the mod is <laughs> where you can you can modify the hard drive. Yeah, you stuff. can you can modify like your character. You can get into the code if you can get into the code somehow. Right. Then you can just script it that way and just pretty much just type it up and yeah, Chris, you just do that. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, there are mods out there. Sounds easy. Well, listen, you can't do it in the PS5 because it's such a closed circuit. Right. You, and it's on a, like mostly it's on a disc or within the program itself. But on the PC, you can actually break it down into the code, um, like you can on a website. Mm-hmm. In conclusion, <laughs> um, we yeah, so that's that's what we're kind of planning with the suit. We're gonna keep the suit. Uh, we we you know we plan to do a more trade show. Is that like to, your next thing you're wanting to do? To well, people? it's it's not necessarily the next thing I want to do. I do believe it's the next thing you I can I kind of have to do and can do. Uh, we have another script that we've been working on for four years. Um, we did a vampire sh- short film about four years ago called Bright Lights, Dark Shadows. It was kind of a music video. Um, in the midst of it, it was right after our followers movie had come out. And that summer, we were writing all these scripts for distributors. And they're like, oh, they're throwing all this money. And then we got kind of burnt out. And for a couple weeks, uh, Sean Gloria, who's also in The Wild Man, also in Followers, he, he actually helped, he co-wrote uh, The we Wild Man. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool video. So we, we, we reached out to these, you know, I was, I'm a big 80s enthusiast, and I reached out to these, um, I guess, uh, retro wave musicians out of Europe. I'm like, hey, you know, we want to do this really cool video. Uh, can we use your song? They're like, yeah. 
I'm like, cool. So two days, we, you know, Carl Hoover, who we just mentioned earlier, I'm like, hey, I want to do makeup like the Lost Boys. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> so we did this really cool, you know, kind of PG R-rated, PG-13 R-rated like vampire short film. Paul Wilson, Patrick Wilson's older brother, makes an appearance in it. Um, and we, it's just a kind of a fun video. And we've used it as like a proof of concept. Um, that's one thing. I, I don't do a lot of shorts anymore, but I, everything I've done short film-wise in the last five or six years is kind of a proof of concept or something yeah, right. that I'm utilizing for a bigger thing. And so we ended up during the pandemic finally really getting into writing the script for it and adapting a script for it. And um, as of right now, we're in talks of optioning the script to us. It's funny because you know, vampires are hot right now. Exactly. And I'm actually writing a vampire <laughs> series mm-hmm. right now. Um, I was going to be a movie, and then I was telling somebody about it, and they were like, that sounds like it'd be a good series. And I'm like, hmm. Like, I don't even know how I would even do a series. But I think I got a plan. Oh, yeah. Keep it under our budget limits. And got a couple people excited about it. So. Yeah, I mean, there's – I mean, God, I didn't even know the um, – obviously, you had an interview with the Vampire Show that just came out. But the let the right, I didn't know there's a Let the Right One In. TV series yeah, that, just, that just launched. Did it just come out? I think so. I didn't even know out. that was coming yeah, it's out. On Showtime. Um, I started sitting ads on it. I'm like, I'm like, is this for the movie? Like, yeah, it's this, a and then and it's the series. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually excited so to see that. we were, you know, we're trying to do something, and we'd like to shoot it locally, but uh, we we may option the script that we have. You know, we've been presented a contract to give the script to uh, some bigger producers. Right. Um, but we, you know, we're kind of, you know, we have to make that choice probably here. Couple weeks, right. um, but that's another project that I would love to direct and produce right here in St. Pete because it actually takes place in Miami in the '80s, mm-hmm. and we're you know we'd love to keep it here, but I think um, I don't know that's the thing. Sometimes you the next movie you make is not necessarily the movie you want to make; it's the movie that uh, just presents itself. presents itself. Because yeah. I didn't think I was going to be doing the Skunk Ape movie. We actually put it off for a year or so at the time because I was like, well, do we want to do another movie like that, or can I make something else? Mm-hmm. But in the end of the day, sometimes the investors show up and like that one. Yeah. All right. Exactly. I want okay. That one. Okay. <laughs> cool. I guess that's what we're doing. And in pandemic, we're like, let's do it. Let's just go do it. Um, so it just it just depends, you know, uh, on what what presents itself. You right. know, we have a couple of different projects we've always wanted to do. There's some new things that we're trying to write. Um, it just kind of everything just you hope kind of comes together. The creative team, my creative teams, you know, you you try to keep everybody together and creating. Keep moving forward. Hey, you know, let's let's go look at this script. Let's keep it going because you know, it, you can blink and it's another year. Yeah. Blink another year. Shoot, That's I mean, right. we were we wrapped the Wild Man two years ago this week. Wow, like the two r- years ago? principal photography it was two years ago. So you're like, okay, man. And then followers are the same way. Followers, we finished filming in April of 2016. It came out the following year in the UK, but it didn't come out in the United States till March 2018. Almost two years. You know, that's and that's what's kind of you. It's we were trying to make the Wild Men a quicker release, right. but we, uh, you know, we went to market as soon as after the film first AFM. And we thought AFM was going to be like easy for us this time around. We sold followers on the trailer and key art alone. This was uh, we're like, okay, cool, bigger month. Mu- did you get a sales rep again, or did you? Went yeah, uh, for the first one, we went by ourselves because we we're like, okay, well, we have everything, we created everything. Right. Let's do, let's try to see if we can do it ourselves. Um, the market wasn't as I thought was going to be as exciting with supply and demand, right? Nobody made any movies. Right. We made a movie. It was going to be easier. It wasn't. Distributors were like taking no risk, just like every other business right. and yep. industry in the world. Nobody wanted to take any risk. So we took the time that uh, January, February, got the money back from the city of Tampa, and like let's go make the movie better. So we made we you know we rented the battleship and Channel Side uh, old museum and kind of amped up some action. They, you know, did some really cool stuff. Um, went back to market. Uh, it played at Popcorn Frights in Fort Lauderdale, in that, uh, summer 2021. And then we had our cast and crew. And then now AFM is coming again in 2021. And so we decided to go with the sales agent then, who had sold our first film. And we had some offers for US, and they were less than we got for followers. What? And I'm like, wow. man, this doesn't add up. This Crazy. is. This is, you know, I was a business major for about a year and a half, but this yeah. still doesn't add up. Right. You know, like I'm crunching these things. I'm like, all right, well, uh, what we learned from our first one is the MG is all the money you might ever get. So we were like, well, that's not enough uh, for our investors, and we decided to go with a different a different route with uh, terror films. 
terror films we had been familiar with for years because uh, Ian and I were really into found footage movies, obviously, since we produced two. Um, Hell House. They did the Hell House series. They distributed the Hell House series, and they were really close to Shutter. So uh, this time around, we, Terror gave us a you know pretty good deal, and we went with them. And no, they only take digital. You know, they had a low marketing cost, though. So it made a lot more sense than giving our movie away to another distributor for like X amount of money, right. and that may be the only thing we ever see. So we went with a different distribution kind of plan. Um, we're still hoping to sell some international coming up in this AFM. Uh, our sales agent still has it for international, just not for domestic. Right. So now it's only it's released in the U.S., Mexico, Canada right now. And we're hoping to kind of branch out and get it out there more over the next few months. Right. I'll tell you what, the theater releases are getting fucking weird, man. So if it's not a horror movie or a Marvel or a DC movie, yeah, it's fucking bombing. Like, oh, yeah. the Amsterdam Big movie time. bombed. Dude. Dude. So I was gonna, I was, I mean, Amsterdam. Was, Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, John David Washington, um, Anya Taylor Joy, Chris Rock, like this Mike Myers, Taylor Swift, what? Zoe Saldana, Rami Malek, Robert De Niro. All these people are in this movie, and it made six million dollars over the weekend. Yeah. They said that it's probably going to lose a hundred million dollars oh, yeah. easily. Yep. Yeah. And it... then you got Terrifier Two, <laughs> yeah. who they only released one showing, one showing per night. Over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, only played at seven o'clock, and I don't even know how many theaters there, were. there couldn't have been. I, I heard, I heard eight hundred. Eight hundred theaters. It made, made one point two million dollars. A two hundred thousand dollar movie made a one point two million dollars. Yeah, they made like four hundred the opening Unbelievable. night. Unbelievable. Because it, it was uh, uh, it was playing in Look Cinemas where we were doing our screening, right. and I'm like, oh shoot, Terrifier Two is going to be playing here. Yeah. So and then like the, the reports came in Friday morning, and I think it brought in almost four hundred thousand million. And then the by the end of the weekend, it was. Too. Incredible. Yeah, it's 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 tough, and and it's the thing. Like I was supposed to go see Amsterdam on Thursday night. I'm pro- yeah. I, I will probably see it. This yeah, week. I want to see it. It's just uh, it's it's, it's tough. Crazy. Because you know, I'll be honest. I went where, by doing the USF viral marketing and walking around telling all these USF students what we were doing. They're like, "Oh, where's the where's the movie theater?" I'm like, "It's Look Cinemas, the one right, right down, down the street, street from you guys." <laughs> they had no idea. Yeah, Is Look a- Cinema owned by Diamond View? No, 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 no. It's just it used to be Studio Movie Grill, right. and this I think the they just kind of switch I've branding. Never heard of look, look now it's that. yeah. There's only a couple is it of them a in national the thing. Or no, just it's only local? a couple. There's one in Texas. Is one it here. locally owned? I believe so. Oh, is it? Yeah. There's so it's one like in, an independent theater. In a way, there's one in I think there's one in Austin or Dallas, and there's one here. Huh. So, that yeah, nice? yeah, that's the thing. Is that a nice theater? Uh, inside, yeah, it was nice. It was just it is University Mall yeah. area still. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's really rough. <laughs> so I mean. Uh, that's the thing. Even you know, if you can't get college students over, know there's right. a movie theater down the street from you. That's different, a little it's a different day and age. But it seems like all people want to watch is horror movies, man. Like the that movie Smile, which I saw was one of the best fucking. I I, I do plan to see this year. I might see it tonight. So good. Yeah, it was so good. And weird market. I love the fucking market. Oh, how about how about how about, like how about the, the baseball game? Yes, yes. I'm, everybody's like posting. What is this about? I'm like, if you don't, I'm like, you don't know about the movie. You haven't been to the movies because they were doing the constant trailers yeah. and teasers. Yeah, if you saw any movie in the last three months, you were going to see a teaser, a weird, awkward teaser. Um, and so that, that that was really cool marketing. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm curious how much it helped, but it had to help a lot. I mean, it because you know it what beat out doing? Amsterdam in the second week of release. Right, right, right. You know, I'm I'm curious how much the demographic they were going for in that game. Yeah. Like you know, the baseball demographic. I'm a big baseball fan. But, you know, I went to a restaurant the other night, and we're in the middle of the baseball playoffs, three games, and for some reason they had NHL preseason playing on mm-hmm. all the TVs instead of what? any baseball playoff game. I'm like, well, this used to be America. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> America's best. <laughs> like, like, I don't know what just happened. Why are we going to the NHL pl- like, preseason playing? Everybody was sick of watching the Rays swing at sliders and missing. Uh, yeah. Hey, sliders I, I think, aren't easy to hit. Dude, uh, I, think, <laughs> I think the Rays swung at 832 sliders and missed every one of them. It was, it, was, it, was, it was brutal. And that was just in the extra inning. And that game. was 15 that was just, innings. That was that just the was extra innings. 15 yeah, innings. I'm, I think I'm, they had four hits. I can't I'm, believe how long that game was. was I'm, I'm a Red Sox fan, so uh, I was rooting for the Mets and the Rays. And now, and in the Cardinals, of my third team I was rooting for, all gone. And they're all out. And now I'm like, okay, well, I guess the Mariners. I was like, a big Mariner fan before we, I, we got the Rays. Yeah. Uh, I followed them for some reason. Oh, I, I mean, because you got the, the, like the best the, the best players. Yeah, yeah Cliffy team. and Randy Johnson. Yeah, of course. Was awesome. uh, so, so now I guess I'm kind of rooting for the Mariners just because 
I don't like the Dodgers. I don't like the Yankees. Yeah, I'm sick of the Astros. I'm yeah. Sick of the Dodgers. So technically, I just want to see the Mariners kind of upset somebody, or even the Indians. The even the Indians are the underdog. The Guardians. Um, you know, Guardians. I, you know, I couldn't. Pick, I called them the Indians. I, the I, I couldn't. Like, I saw their logo. That's how like, we get. That's how we get flagged on this uh, right. this episode. But uh, the Guardians, their their logo is awful. Like, Dude, you, their name is awful. Well, well, yeah, their uniform is awful. But Let's go back to the their Indians. Logo, awesome like, logo. Like, I, I was like, that's a professional baseball team. Like, it looked like a, like a high school mascot. Why is Indians like? No, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why I don't that's. I don't, I don't know if we have that much time to go into that, <laughs> but. It's just like I think I, I do think Washington Redskins that was yeah, that's that was a little bit more. Of, yeah, but it, it, I think there was a, who was, it? was it Bill Burr or somebody somebody was making a joke. I can't remember. I was watching it. Like I, I you think they really care? You think the Native Americans really care about a baseball much. team? He's like, no, they they probably just would would mind some of their land back. <laughs> right. That was exactly. that was the thing. Like, yeah, you guys can keep the baseball team. Just if we, we could just have land. some more land up in South Dakota, <laughs> you know, more it'd be casinos. great. <laughs> yeah, like. I don't know. It's but crazy. I saw their logo and I was like, wow. You, you mean your logo or the, the like the actual? Well, it's the G with the. Right. It's, right, right, right. it's like, come on. It is kind of weird. It looks just like, like someone made that on Photoshop or something. I, I, like, that's what I think it's tough. Or PowerPoint. Like the Washington Commanders, it sounds yeah, like. It's just weird. It, sound, it does sound like. It's not right. Uh, you know, what you would call the team in Starship Troopers or. Yeah. Uh, you well, know, that's the thing. They've been the Redskins since I've been alive. Yeah. And. That's over old. 90 years. Yeah, and, 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 and years. I mean, the, the Cleveland, or, yeah, Cleveland Indians were, I mean, they, they're some of the longest organizations around. Yeah. So, But um, but I think the Commanders went with, because it's Washington, D.C., Commander-in-Chief. I think they the, just went Well, the time. Guardians thing is because I guess there's, there, it's the Guardian City or something. There's something with, they have, like, huge statues of Guardians. Oh, I've never been there. there. There's something no, about it. Uh, I've researched it. Or they were, ta- they were talking about it when they were trying to pick the team. I'm sure name. Cleveland's. I've I've heard Cleveland's actually a really cool city, but it's like on my list of places to visit. Cleveland is, isn't on it. No. I, don't so, know. I just it's went like to. Uh, I went to. I went to. I actually got to go see. I went to Bush Stadium uh, last month uh, on the way to Iowa and the Ozarks, and um, I got to see Adam Wainwright and Yachty tie their record. And then the following week is when they broke the oh, record. Oh, you went to the game? Yeah, I was there. I was like, cool. Like, it was a noon game, so we flew in. I'm like, oh, cool, it's a noon game. And that, no, yeah, there's never a noon that's game. Awesome. So we went to a noon game, got to watch the game, and then head to the Ozarks. But it was, I was it's just, it's really cool going to a real baseball, baseball stadium. stadium. Yeah. Uh, last year, I was at Fenway Park for the playoffs. Uh, when they won, they beat the Astros, and they lost the Astros tragically. Uh, but I was there all week. And then, I, you know, because I had gone to the Rays games before that at Trop. And then went to Boston. It's just a whole other. Oh, well, other yeah. We kind of got screwed. We we went to we went on an Alaskan cruise a few months ago, and we were supposed to go to the Mariners game because we came in a day early, just kind of walk around Seattle and stuff. And um, we were going to go to the Mariners Toronto game that night, and our travels was a fucking nightmare, <laughs> and we just couldn't go to the game. Like it sucked. I was so mad because I really wanted to go to the park. It's a beautiful stadium. I've seen at least on, I've seen on video. Yeah. I've been to Wrigley. I've been to Fenway, obviously. And it's the so new, cool because the, they got the, the Mariner Stadium and the Seahawks Stadium. Like, you can walk across the street. Oh, really? Yeah, they're right next to each other. And I'm like, why don't they do that here? You got Tampa Stadium. You got all that freaking land. Well, yeah, you'd have to take – you remember Rams Just James? Just the baseball stadium there. Yeah. Parking would be insane. It's, well, it's Steinbrenner's Fields right there or whatever it's it, called now. Uh, it, it is it's still, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking down. what it used to yeah. be called Legends. And, and the Yankees have a lot more money than the Tampa Bay. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they have a lot more money. They're willing to spend more money. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yankee yeah, Stadium. The Yankees probably got a lot. They're like a, the most expensive franchise oh, in sure like all of sports. Yeah. Well, not really. I think it's Man uh, U. Who? Manchester United, yeah. probably. Right. All sports. Yeah. Most people have soccer. Well, Cowboys, too. They spend so much money. Yeah. Dallas, and they still suck. Yeah, I don't get it. Well, I they haven't won it. a playoff game since the nineties. Yeah, is that true? That? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they haven't won a playoff game since, since the nineties. Since the third since ninety five. No, not ninety five. Is it? Since since they the won the Super Bowl. The yeah. last time they won the Super Bowl, that's the last playoff game they won. Really? I thought at least they did something in the late nineties, like one before Troy Aikman retired. Troy Aikman retired like nineteen ninety nine or two thousand something like that. Yeah, probably around there. Yeah, yeah. it's insane. So what is your feeling on? I know you're not a Yankee fan, but Aaron Judge. So he's great, man. I love it. 
I love it. Do you think they extend him? Do you think they offer him another contract? Well, they're definitely going to offer like, him another contract. How do you contract. not give that guy I'm hoping, wants. I'll be honest, I'm hoping the Mets freaking offer him like $40, 50000000 million yeah, right. and just steal the market share of New York. New York. <laughs> that's, that's what I would say. I'm like, I'm like he's worth $50, 60000000 million just to take that market share from the Yankees. Right. Yeah. And I, I think he, But I don't I, think that would ever happen. I, it, they, Cohen, Steve, after, Steve, after they just Mets just lost like the way they did, um, I'm hoping they they take a swing at him. I think they will. I think everyone will. Steve Cohen will. I think everyone will. but the Oakland Athletics will, will yeah. do a swing. I think, um, <laughs> and I think I think the uh, Red Sox are going to take a swing at him. Yeah. Though now all of a sudden Brian Cashman, I guess it came <laughs> Can out. Can you imagine Aaron Judge at Fenway Park? It might hit a hundred home runs. Oh, the, the Green Monster they'd have to be re, uh, remastered because it'd be probably more dense in it. Make it higher. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm hoping. You know, you know what's kind of crazy is um, they didn't do much when he hit 62. This you know, it's interesting. I remember 1998, and they you know, they stopped the game when McGuire hit it. Yeah. Right. And they had the whole big presentation. Oh yeah, they had a big thing. And it's interesting that they didn't do. I know it's not the now not the actual league record, but it was the the AL record. Yeah. And they didn't right. really do anything after the game. They didn't do any press conference. I know the Maris family is probably a little worn out for traveling for the last the previous yeah. three weeks. And like, God, can he just hit it already? Uh. Uh, but. I, I was kind of it was very lackluster because I you know I, I remember vividly that summer of '98 and watching every Cardinals at bat those last couple oh, of yeah, that's so every so the cover of every great. Tampa Tribune so guys Tampa Tribune is a newspaper uh, <laughs> back in the day you'd get it on your doorstep um, and every morning you know the cover of the Tamp the cover of the Tampa Tribune would be McGuire hitting another home run and it had have in the top corner of the count. Well, you got to remember at yeah. that at that time that that. That uh, record lasted from the, right. the early 60s. Yeah. So, we're so 20, no one had ever even 20, seen 70, anything 20, like that years. before. And then now we're at 20, almost 20 years since somebody's hit 60 right. again. Um, and that's what I was like. People were like, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm like, no, it's a, it is still kind that's of a big, big deal. Yeah. Now we know he's not taking steroids or taking any type of PEDs. So you know it's a little bit more... Genuine. Genuine. Yeah. And it's tough because but here's it, the thing, man. PEDs, you still got to hit the fucking ball. Oh, yeah. Like hitting a 100 mile an hour fastball or curveball or sliders yeah. isn't easy. And yeah. And I, that's the thing. They, I, I don't. That's, that's what McGuire used to say. He's like, he's like I still have my eye right. and eye coordination. You still got to hit the ball. Uh, and it's, it's I tough. I could take steroids and go out there and get no home runs. Right. Right. So I don't. There was plenty of those guys doing that in the 90s that sure. weren't hitting any home runs. And I'm sure. All the pitchers back then when Bonds was doing it were on freaking steroids, and, and that's, too. that's what's tough, too. Is I, So I went to the Baseball Hall of Fame this year to see David Ortiz getting inducted. And, you know, when I was a kid, and baseball was like my life, I remember being like, is 98, 98, 99, 2000, 2001. I'm looking at all the, I remember looking at all the statistics. I'm like, oh, my dad, everybody's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Right. Like, who's not going to be in the Hall of Fame that's playing not right none now? None of them are. Yeah, and none of them are. Because, like, everybody had 20, 20 home runs, 100 RBIs, about yeah, 280 right. or higher. I'm like that's that's whole thing. every your one through five is going to the Hall of Fame and almost every other every other team <laughs> and and then here we are cut scene the entire the entire generation just has been, been wiped away now yeah. if you go into the Hall of Fame they're all in the Hall of Fame at some point they're in something so like Bonds is in there with in the home run thing they have a steroid era little thing uh, that kind of shows they call them call it the steroid era no it's it's something like that. Like I, I have a picture. I can't remember what they call it. <laughs> like they the have, they have, in the <laughs> they have they have an area for it. Um, but they all are in there. Even like Pete Rose has his hits right. record in there. They're not on a. They're not enshrined, but they are. They are. They have their own section. Their bonds is in there. You know, Kurt Schilling has his bloody sock in there, but he'll never be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of those Clemens things. Clemens. Clemens. You know, I I grew up with Clemens and Wade Boggs on my wall. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's crazy to me to think Clemens won't be in the Hall of Fame. If he, you know, he, there's a good chance though this coming year because now they've they've moved on to the the Veterans Association that the Clemens and Bonds could be inducted this year. It was a it was a, I don't know if you, nobody that's ever been to the Hall of Fame. It's a pretty cool thing. Yeah. Uh, me and my dad did our kind of like father son trip. We were thinking about this since we were kids. We went up there to stay in Albany and then drive to the small little town Cooperstown. It's a heck of a drive. Um, but what was really cool was the parade. We didn't know what this parade was. We're like, let's hang out, see what this parade is. And it's the parade of everybody. So my, you know, it's Dennis Eckersley and Barry, uh, I'm sorry, uh, King Griffey Jr. Uh, everybody riding in cars. And it's right there, like from here to over to that wall. 
you're seeing these legends that you right. watch just driving in cars, waving. So, you know, wow. it was so cool. Wade Boggs is drinking a beer. <laughs> like with a, yeah, it was cool. Um, and that was the that was one of the coolest things, just seeing all the, your your legends and all your heroes just driving down right. this main street. And uh, that was that was really that was really cool. That I mean, the, the museum's only three floors, but um, it takes you like four or five hours to walk it. Yeah. It's a lot. It's just because you're taking your time. You're taking pictures of cool places. Oh, yeah. They even had a baseball card area, whole like all about memorabilia, all sport uh, baseball memorabilia. That was really cool. Um, but that's the thing. In the end of the day, I think uh, I do believe Barry Bonds probably is our home run. Leader. It should be, man. It's it was wild to me. No, I wonder how many kids know that. That's a lot of home runs. How many twelve year olds know who our home run leader is, and who how is it how is it spoke? Because when we were kids, like it was it's common knowledge. Hank Aaron. Babe Ruth and Hank Aaron, that's who it is. And then, like, 20 years later, is it Barry Bonds? Is it Mark McGuire? You know, or is it, you know, do they just know Aaron Judge? So it's, 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 it's interesting to me how, they, how, the, how the history has changed. Well, this generation doesn't know what movie theaters is, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <and like. laughs> yeah. It's, it, is wild. it is kind of wild to me. I mean, I, you know, baseball is, is, is always been a part of my life. Um, oh, yeah. It was I played a, it. I played yeah. Division One. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but. Like, what do you think the next baseball card is? You know how the baseball oh, the card NFT stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't give me. I don't, I don't know if we have enough time to talk about NFTs and explain what an NFT is. But I, that's interesting to me too because I remember my big um, was once again '98 to like oh, 2001. Yeah. I had all these baseball cards. I still have. All oh, the top cards. All, I, had, I, had, I had like the I have like the '98 98 tops complete yep. set. My exp- most expensive card at one point was this Mike Piazza card. It was like sixty dollars at the time. And I was like, oh my god. This is how I'm going to get into college. Kids, he played for the Mets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the One of the best no, catchers. Now, ever. what's what's cool in it, I have the card at the Hall of Fame. They have a section. So do, so I have I have a baseball card, I have two, of him on the Marlins. Ah. For the, he was only on the Marlins for like 48 hours. Yeah. So I didn't know this because I thought, like, oh, this card's got to be worth a bunch of money. So it's the most overly produced really? card. So they made – he was only on the team for like a weekend. The Marlins before you, so you got traded from the Do- just to let you guys get traded from the Dodgers to the Marlins, and then the Marlins to the Mets, all in like a week. Um, and so they they produce like a hundred cards of him as a Marlin, and they have an own section in the Baseball Hall of Fame showing this, all the different cards that they produce of just a couple games that he was on. So they, I mean, they, they must have had like what took a hundred, a couple hundred photos of him while playing, and every one of those cards, every one of those pictures made into a baseball card. It's like crazy. So that was it was interesting little section in the memorabilia thing. Uh, speaking of kids, do you know what Bobby Bonilla Day is? Yeah, that's yes. like one of the most celebrated days in baseball. Greatest, <laughs> greatest contract of all time. I'm yes. surprised a lot of people other than not ask for that. A lot of people just don't ask for that. Well, million, back million dollars in, a year. Right. Well, twenty. It was a big thing that came up twenty years because the Red Sox still pay Manny Ramirez. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. uh, it was all Bonilla different. Day still goes for another five or ten years. Too, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Nuts. Uh, somebody just, you know, uh, somebody just did an interview. Oh, they, they did an interview with him in Tampa this, on Bob Bonilla Day. Um, local makeup artist. Christina Aaron Judge Grace. needs to do and call it Judgment Day. That's what they yeah, need to do. <laughs> I love weird stats and stuff. Yeah. So here's one good one. So did you know that the Braves have won the World Series in 1914, 1957, 1995, and 2021? And in each of those years, the Auburn quarterback's last name was Nix. Hmm. That's random. Like, N-I-X? So weird, right? N-I-X, yeah. Really? In all right. those years? Every single year that the Braves won a World Series. Or, so the Braves should obviously make Auburn, like, here, draft this, you know, yeah. recruit this guy with the last name of Nix so we can win the World Series. I don't know. I mean, that's just a coincidence. You know, I was watching, the, like, um, YouTube video about coincidences and it's a lot of them are so unbelievable it's ridiculous like i can't think of one off the top of my head but like the some coincidences that they have like on those are just so random but it just worked out like actually i think of one right now identical twins um never met separated married a wife same first name get divorced the same year married married the second person um, with the same name and have the same name dog, and then they meet five years later. The first time, like that's wild. It's like the coincidences that I just they're just so unbelievable. It just glitches in the matrix yeah. to me. I think 
Yeah. But I don't know. What are your thoughts on Matri- on Glitch in the Matrix? <laughs> There's too many coincidences and too yeah, many. There's a lot of the kind of crazy stuff that you're like, yeah. Okay, there has to be something. Um, I don't know. That's what I'm like. Oh, there's something there. There's some type of uh, fate. Yeah. It's a weird fate thing. But um, you also have the Mandela effect. Like yeah. the stuff that you know we think of that was like that's not really how it, it was. Doesn't really happen. Yeah. Like, like come on now. Like I don't know. It's strange. But you see how we get on tangents. It just goes random. Right. Yeah. But <laughs> are you a football fan? I, I do follow more football now that the Bucks and the Dolphins are more competitive than they have been in the past 20 years. Mm-hmm. So I grew up um, – I was actually born during a Miami Hurricanes Florida Gators game in 1987. Mm. Um, so I was always – I grew up being, you know, a uh, Hurricanes fan yeah, at one point. Fan and um, Tampa Bay Bucks, obviously, and Dolphins, uh, following Dan Marino and then following the, the, you know, the famous uh, 99 Bucks season when Trent Dilfer got hurt and Sean King. Yep. Stepped in for a, a few weeks and almost let us. Yeah, Bird Emanuel. Oh, God, and, and uh, you know that whole that was a big deal. And then watching them when the the Bucks winning the Super Bowl in two thousand two, and you know that since then, both the, the Bucks and Dolphins against have, the Raiders. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Both the Bucks and the Dolphins have really not been competitive since the last few years. Yeah. So it has been really fun. So then you kind of get lost, and then you try to play fantasy football. You're like, you know, who are all these players? I get it gets it's tough. Um, you know, I hope you know it's 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 tough to follow. Like, it, I, you know, it took me a few years to get caught back up on baseball. So I, you know, I love movies. And then college, when I got to college, it was all about making movies. And I kind of, you know, I was stepping away from baseball. Yeah. It, as a person that play baseball, it's hard to watch. Just like it's like breaking up with a girlfriend. Uh, once you stop playing baseball, you don't want to watch anybody else play baseball yep. for a little bit. That could have been me. Yeah. It, it yeah. Get, it's a really weird thing. You don't want to watch it. You don't want to see anybody play with it, um, and it took a few years away. Like I, I got away from baseball for a few years, and then um, just focused on making movies and like movies in college. And then you know, then the Red Sox won like two thousand seven to twenty thirteen, and about twenty fourteen is when I got back into baseball, kind of following it every day, playing fantasy baseball. It really helped me like trying to get back into it. But um, you know, it's tough football. God, like I, I had, I, I go back, I go and I research. I'm like, when did these guys switch teams? When did they do this? When did they do this? And it, right. there's just so much turnover in quarterback. It's hard to follow all these different players. And then they're in and out of the league so much quicker now. Oh yeah. Um, you know, it's tough. I, I mean, I, I hope the Bucks keep winning, and I, I wish the Dolphins uh, get their quarterback back. Did you watch but, that back to baseball? Did you watch that Nolan Ryan documentary? No, I want to. There's a couple. I haven't watched the Don Madeline one. I've heard a lot about that one. That's really so, good. Here's a trivia question: How many Cy Young awards did Nolan Ryan win? Zero. Zero. Hey, why? That's what they, that That's came up. Somebody was talking about it the other day, and that blew my mind. So, but he was—he was always one of those like ten and fifteen. Right. You know, he'd have ten wins, fifteen losses. Yeah. You know. So one year when he was with the Angels, the team won seventy-nine games. Okay, that's fucking pathetic. He won twenty-one games. He broke the all-time single-season strikeout record that year, and they gave the Cy Young to Jim Palmer. Yeah, there was a couple of seasons that he should have won it, and that's why. But that's what's great about this new Hall of Fame is they're digging into those numbers, like uh, the Jim Cotts who just go, who got in finally. Uh, they're breaking these like they, these guys were amazing, but because they were playing in such an amazing era, right. that they got overshadowed. Like yeah. you know, everybody had twenty, you know, fifteen to twenty wins like at one point. Yeah, it's funny when I was a kid, like everybody hit over two eighty, pretty much. If you batted under. Two fifty. If you had it under two fifty, you, you were a catcher. Yeah. You were you were a middle infielder. You were Walt Weiss or somebody, right. or you were you know you were you but were really guys, you were, yeah you were really you were a really good defender. <laughs> even those guys were hitting like two seventy two eighty. They were stealing bases. You know like Robbie yeah, when, Thompson. When Jim Russell Abbott has a better batting average than Joey Gallo, yeah, right. like that's when you got to start thinking. You know, <laughs> now like, it's just like yeah, these guys can't hit. Like is the pitching that good? You, or I is think the so. hitting that bad? Well, you gotta think. It's like in football, and you think everyone's it's a lot stronger. A lot, um, the, they uh, they train a lot differently now, right? Um, and they train a lot longer now. Yeah, uh, I think that so all the analytics of... yeah, yeah. has ruined baseball. You like, know, you got guys in the sixth inning throwing a no hitter, and they're taking them out of the fucking game. And I'm like, what are you doing? Why would they do that? Like, I don't understand why they would do that. Because I oh, do. he's on a pitch count. I'm like, well, Nolan Ryan I... threw. A 14-inning game. He threw 14 innings, 
yeah. the guy played till he was 48 years old, and the only reason why he quit was because he got injured. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, I mean, he may be on a You know, one planet, thing that I, I, it drives me nuts over the last, like, five, when they're talking about the, the time of the games, now they were going slow, nobody ever talked about is why the games were going so slow is that more people were striking out. Yeah. And like, oh, yeah. I'm like, that's what slows down the game. When you're not making contact, but you're pitching, you pitching have to pitch three to five pitches a, a uh, at least. At least you're talking. That's that's three or four minutes. And you're like, fouling off. Yeah, balls and... a ten pitch back can be five minutes. Right. You know? And people never talk about them. Like, well, if people made more contact, the game may go quicker. Right. Yep. Instead of you know, that's the thing. Nobody talked about that. I'm like, well, that's the thing. Why why you don't need a pitch clock if, if people actually make contact? So is that's it better what, pitching or just bad hitting? I, I think it's really a, you know high speed hitting, but you see I see Vogelbach in the Mets and he's fouling off hundreds hundred mile per hour pitches. I think it's it's a mixture of what what do people pay for? People pay people for the home runs. Home run. People want to see home runs in RBIs. Like but I think ball. I think this whole next year with the shift the shift going back to normal should be a little bit more exciting. And know what's crazy is no one in the major leagues can bunt. Yeah, I'm like. I do. I, gotta, down third I do got to double. I do got to give it up though. Christian Arroyo who plays with the Red Sox. Who was actually he went to he played at USF. He's from Tampa. Um, he bunted several times to the Red Sox the last few years. Yeah. I, every time I see it, I'm like, yes, I love, I love seeing a good bunt. <laughs> These guys are good, shifting. Like, I bunted love a good down sack base, You'll get a double Juan, every Juan, time. Juan Soto bunted the other day in that Mets game, and it was like it was just, it ended up being just a sack bunt. Right. But it, they're like, yeah, he bunted a little bit over there. We're gonna hit. Right. It was, you know, the best player in baseball decided to bunt the other night. But they just can't bunt. Like, yeah, I've seen I, so many guys, and they get up there, and they're just like, oh, like they look I crazy. Drives me nuts. You, you, <laughs> I look like a, a you know what? I saw, I saw a pro, you know, professional baseball player. Oh, holding the bat like, like this? this. Oh, and I'm really? like, oh, my God. I want to know who. I, I, remember, <laughs> I remember I took a picture of it on my screen. I'm like, oh, what were they thinking? I'm like, how did you yeah. get? Good way to break You're in the fingers. professional baseball. I think he was a he was a pitcher. Oh, that but is. I, and it drove it still, still drove me nuts. Still, a pitcher should but, know how to bunt more than anybody. Let's be real though. When you're a, before you were a pitcher, you were a shortstop or a, you know you're yeah. you're something, and you had to learn a bunt. It drove me nuts because I I learned as a, I I know I was bunt, I bunted I was a I master bunter. I mean that bunter. was that was typical 80s 90s was yeah. the guy the eighth batter gets on base the pitcher bunts him the second. Yeah. I, I mean it's sacrifice bunt. It was like common all the time. Yeah. Now these guys can't bunt worth the shit. Like if they had to bunt, I, they can't do it. And that's what. That's why I, <laughs> it's unbelievable. I'm like, how are you a million dollar player and you can't even bunt a ball, a ball? You know, in Japan, did you guys see that? They have the bunting challenge. They have a bunting derby. Dude. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It's awesome. Uh, they were they were showing it. Um, every time the the home run derby comes around, they show like highlights of the bunting derby, the derby, and they they have like they have like um, you know, like point systems. For distance, you gotta bunt it towards yeah. Like if you spot, and, and if fine. you can drop it in this area, it's like a hundred points. And they have like a they have a competition for bunting. When I was a kid, we used to have little. My coach used to put like rings down on the and just challenge everybody. We would have to bunt in those little rings. That's, that, that's where do, they, I learned how that's to what bunt. They, that's what they do in Japan. <laughs> they have like an actual competition. I was ten years old doing this, <laughs> like bang and just getting yeah, my, into those. My circles. dad had me bunting, practicing bunting when I was like eight, nine, ten years old. By the time I was 12 and 13, that was, I was like, my dad, give me the, he gave me the sign, the bunt, and actually the belt, belt, the bunt, belt. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would, I'd indicator. Bunt. Yeah. indicator, indicator. Yeah. It's like when I was a kid, I could bunt down first, I could bunt down third. Yeah. You know, like, it and it was crazy. like, it was, stu- it was for like me, it was automatic, art. man. It was, it was like, I, I had a couple really big bunts in like all-star games and stuff that like, they would throw it down the line. Really big bunts. Big bunts, man. <laughs> they could count on me. I had the game winning bunt. But, Yeah. <laughs> It's, well, it is a lost art. I like heart. big bunts that I cannot lie. <laughs> but it's probably more the egos in these players that yeah. they're like, I want to hit a home run. I don't want to. Oh, yeah. yeah. And let's be real. We at 12 years old, there's a lot and of I think kids. That's a, oh, yeah. I think that's another thing why there's so many strikeouts is everybody's just swinging for the fence, man. Like, it's Oh, just, it, it is it is gut-wrenching. It's rampant. For anybody that's ever played the game, to watch your team is down one run. Crazy. And you need a base like, hit. Like, like, Mandy or, 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 I, I watched that guy swing for the fence, and and all they got like, I need to see the guy was buddy. on the first. I think there was a guy on the first. I'm like, let's get him over. Right. Get him over, Randy. They don't play like that. I'm like, just get They're selfish. Yeah. And that's what the Rays used to be was pitching oh, a yeah. small ball. You know, yeah. Punt the guy to the second. Get it. You that, know. That's what drove me nuts. Base I hit, watched the playoffs. Home. I'm like, oh my god. 
Like I'm like you just you get you need one run. This the whole the, the whole first game. I mean that's what playoffs are. It's like one run here, station to station baseball. Right. And that's 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 who. So wins. basically, what we want to do is get Moneyball back. That, that's what that's what we're saying right now. <laughs> that's what the Rays were built on, man. Money we didn't have well, we got your, we got the other Moneyball guy with the Red Sox, and now we have Scrap. High Bloom. Um, it's funny is that most of the best the GMs and the major teams are all Rays guys. Yeah. Freeman. Uh, Bloom and they're it was, genius, man. There was the other, there's a third guy that out there I think that was a raise a GM they're at one point. Genius. Their system is farm team, bring them up, they become superstars. Trade that guy in the middle of the season for five more prospects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait and till then it's develop their, them, and well, it's just a constant. It's basically what Oakland did. It's just like, a constant. Yeah, Oakland. yeah, Oakland's Oakland's kind of sad because like you, you you'd hope they'd do a little bit better, but they have to get rid of everybody. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, their whole salary, the whole salary pool is like fifty million. That's it. Like that's all. That's, that's all they're gonna spend all on right. baseball players. That's all they need. It's the same thing. Well, with the Rays. I think that's if they get need. if they ever get a new stadium, they're never gonna get it. No, nope. the city's never gonna give them that. The it's wild because they're gonna leave. They're gonna yeah, leave. It's, it sucks. All those teams are gonna leave. That's like eventually the Rays will have to leave. Well, they don't make enough money to to justify a stadium, and they're only putting a salary. On for fifty million out there, so they're not bringing any exciting players, so they're not going to sell tickets because they're not bringing the exciting. I think nobody it, wants it, to it, go it, there. Well, people I mean, go, actually, the people, area people wanna, sucks. People want to go there. I don't know if they want to go there to watch baseball. That's what's frustrating. I go there and I feel like I'm at a, I'm at a, I'm at a mall. Well, you see yeah. how close it is to the Everybody's guys eating yeah, it's and like the food floor. Exactly, it is. I I don't even sit in my seat. Sometimes I go and I'll just sit in center field um, instead of. Going and sitting in the seat because nobody wants to sit and watch the game. Right. It's weird. It's weird. I got an argument with somebody because I'm like, all right, here's the thing. So the Rays came in what 94? 98. 98. Okay. 98. We get a baseball team. And it takes a while to build a fan base. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the problem is, is people like yourself, you root for who? The Red Sox. You're a Red Sox fan. Mm -hmm. You are who? Yankees. Yankees fan. You both live in Tampa, but you root for teams that aren't from here. Well, because yeah. I'm so, not from here. <laughs> the people that are from Tampa, there's not many of us. Yeah. Okay. I was born and raised here. There's not many of us. I was born and raised here too, but my dad brainwashed me as a kid. Right. So, and like I said, I liked the Mariners when I was a kid before we got a team. I liked the New York Islanders when I was a kid, but now I fucking hate the Islanders and I don't even care about the Mariners. I got yeah. my hometown teams that I root for now. Yeah. And it's going to take – so my kid roots for the Lightning and the Rays and yeah. the Bucks, And then his kid's going to root for the Rays and the Bucks and the Lightning. And it takes generations of that to build a freaking yeah. huge following and a fan base. And with them winning helps and the Bucks and the Lightning. But for some reason, it doesn't help it, the Rays. The Rays so weird. If you look at the Rays over the past, what, 14 seasons, 15 seasons? Oh, yeah, they're in the, the playoffs every. They're the most, year. one of the most. They have probably the, one of the best records. Absolutely. Because it's it's what ever since about 2007, I want to say 2000, 2008, they were in the World it was Series. When we got Madden. When we got Joe Madden. Yeah. They so you look really at how consistent they are. They have they've made it to the playoffs more times than the Red Sox. Like we're team. pretty much in the playoffs every year. Yeah. Or com- very competitive. We're not. We're not built to be. We're not. We're built for long seasons. Right. We're not built for. Yeah. You. We don't playoffs. Yeah. We're, we're stuck in the playoffs. Because the, I mean the, the twenty twenty season, we're facing 2020 the season was perfect for them. Right. They they okay cool sixty games in the playoff time. They had it. You know that was their that was their time to do it. Yeah. Uh, it yeah it's just it's it is kind of depressing because you go. I mean shoot we were at the I went to went to the Red Sox game last month. Um, nobody's there. Yeah. It's your first play. At the yeah, time it's like it, I mean this team people. is this team is leading the AL wild card right now. And nobody cares. The top one yeah. of the best. You know, sure, we won the division the last last two year. or three years. Right? Twenty 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 one, you guys won it, and it was. I mean, they they kicked the Red Sox spot. Then they're obviously the Red Sox got in the playoffs and uh, won, beat them. But it is sad. They, it, it, it is kind of because like I live I live right there off twentieth. I'm like about fifteen minute walk to the stadium, and I, I try to go to the games, but I'm like I don't want to go see them play the. The Tigers. Brewers. Yeah, the Tigers. <laughs> the, I was going to say Brewers. I don't know why, but I was like, uh, Brewers is another sad team. I can't believe they, they didn't make it playoffs. Um, but it, it's tough. Um, you hope to build a better area and better I think stadium. the stadium is – it's old. Okay. Yeah, and I used to go there. And it's not a baseball the Thunderdome. Stadium. So what happened – I remember going there as a kid to see the Lightning Yeah, game. the Lightning. 
played there. Remember so, looking up? Like, oh, wow. So what happened, <laughs> you know, we were supposed to get the San Francisco Giants. We're supposed to come here. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, my God, we're going to get the Giants. Hurry up, build a stadium. And they just built this stadium, okay? And I don't think they put much thought into it. They built that thing in, like, a year. Yeah. And well, crap. the Giants were like, yeah, we're not going to come. We're yeah. going to stay in San Francisco. So now we got this stadium that no one's in, and we're like, what the fuck are we going to do now? And I think that was in 93 when they built that stadium, 92, 94, around there. And then the Lightning came, and they played at the fairgrounds their first season. They were at the fairgrounds. Uh And then they moved to the Dome. They called it the Thunderdome, and they were there for two or three years as they built their new stadium. I think think they were there for at least – a while were they because i think was, a- emily emily or st pete times or whatever you want to call it i think they built that in 98 really yeah so they were there like four years i think but the stadium's a piece of shit like it's it, there was no thought put into it i mean you yeah. can hit a ball and hit the roof like that's how much thought they put into it and it's in a shitty part of town there's nothing around there unless you want to get a tattoo or you know some wine at the liquor store there's homeless people all over the place. It's a terrible spot. If they put it in Ybor City, downtown Tampa, over by the Buck Stadium, there was actually plans it's more for central. It to do that. There's actually, yeah. I, I've seen yeah. plans of them doing that. It's more centralized, so you're going to get the people from Carrollwood and Northdale yeah, who aren't going to drive all the way to the Dome. You're going to get those people. Yep. You're going to get walk-up traffic from all the people that live around there. And that's the thing. Where they're at now, they get no walk-up traffic because there's nothing around there it's just all yeah. crap um and i think that would help their attendance i'm not saying they're going to sell out the games or anything but they would probably get 15 to 20 thousand people to the game i mean the lightning they sell out every game yeah it's, it they is, sell out every it game. is it is wild because there's how, a lot to do down there the stadium's amazing like it's such a nice but they're place not going to spend money like tampa the city is not going to spend money on the city if they on, on a stadium if they can't guarantee right. that like, well, it, something's going to happen because the new the new uh, mayor of St. Pete, yeah. he don't want them there. He doesn't want the stadium. He wants to tear that down and build um, housing for lower class or you know lower, lower, income. lower income families. I mean, there's condos going up, and up crazy right there. Yeah, so he it, wants to tear the stadium you know, down it, and make it lower they, they keep building up that area around the stadium, uh, but in the end, it's going to be – I think it's too late. Yeah. Uh, it's almost too late. I think so, too. Uh, because it, it, I mean everything keeps changing right there. They're flipping little places out of that that little block of area. I mean Ferg's is there and some of the other places, but yeah, there's a couple bars. Or yeah, I, I mean I I like it. I just going to that stadium. It's not. It's depressing. Fun. It is a little depressing because um, I remember my first. I mean those are my first games. My first game was a Bar- 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 Baltimore Orioles game. Cal Ripken hit a foul ball right over my head. That was my first professional uh, major league baseball game. I'd gone to spring training games, but never. A pro game, so that was the Orioles, and then I did like a series of uh, Red Sox games that year, and then I remember, so my first pilgrimage to Fenway Park, you'll appreciate this, was 2004, July, A-Rod Veritek Brawl, mm-hmm. so I was there for nice. that weekend, and <laughs> it was an, it was a really cool weekend, so uh, Kevin Millar hit three home runs Friday night, the next day was the famous A-Rod Veritek Brawl, and then uh, we owned, that's when we started to own Mariano Rivera that weekend, yeah. Uh, we came back. Bill Miller hit this walk-off home run, and it was the coolest. It's that's ten what it's minutes. about atmosphere, man. <sighs> yeah. For ten minutes, <sighs> just crazy. Yeah. And then we ended up winning again on Sunday. Nomar it was traded like five days later. Uh, I had bought a shirt. I'm like, my dad's like, we can maybe get traded. I'm like, I gotta buy the shirt. Still have a shirt. Um, and you know, then that whole season changed from that time because we would have got. It changed the entire trajectory of the entire yeah, first right. World Series season. Um, but and then I went to I went to tr- about the Tropicana Field like a month later. Yeah. Like this guy is lame. This sucks. Yeah, <laughs> so like this is nothing. I, I remember just... I was like I was 16. I'm like you know I went back then in those years. You might be 16 years old, but you're ready to fight some grown right. man who's saying Nomar sucks, and you're just you're like yeah, you suck. You just want to fight. Right. It was all this like pent up um, you know losing for everybody's so long. like this now it's well, all chill now, well that's yeah, what florida is <laughs> yeah I, I went back to fenway in 2017 for the first time and um it was actually when judge was going through a horrible like strikeout streak he couldn't hit a home run for like a month 
right after he'd done the uh, home run derby. Yeah. And um, everything was so docile. Everybody's like joking. Oh, Yankees suck. Ha, ha, ha. I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> I'm like, terrible. I remember being 16, ready to like jump into a brawl over the Red Sox and Yankees. That was just how, that's how you were. Times have changed. Yeah. Times have changed. A lot of the, you know, fans. That's, that's, and you hit it on the head. Like, there's no atmosphere there. And, like, I went to a Yankees-Mets game at the old Yankee Stadium the last season mm. before they uh, before they moved to the new stadium. And I'm in the bleachers. And ESPN game on Sunday night. And the Mets and Yankee fans are just, like, Oh, yeah. Bantering the whole game. And it was hilarious. Like, it was just, it was fun bantering. You know, like, they weren't trying to fight each other. It was just kind of like what? fun back and forth, you know. A Rod, they know each run. other. I, I, I was at, I was at the, I was, this, a year ago yesterday, I was at the Red Sox Rays playoff game. And there was one Red Sox fan, dude, sitting in front of us. He, he flew in from Boston. He was up every time, every pitch. He was just like chirping, 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 chirping. chirping. And, you know, all the Rays fans like, sit down. The okay. Ushers actually almost let, got him out of it. He wasn't doing anything right. more than he would do at Fenway Park. And uh, the usher almost, like, kicked him out of the game right. for just, like, being a kind of – Not uh, uptight. A, a very enthusiastic <laughs> Red Sox fan. Right. Every pitch. He's like, come on, come on. Yeah. You know, he's just – and then they were almost kicked him out. And I'm like, right. no, no, he's fine. He's just, just actually doing being something at the game. Being a fan. <laughs> it, it's a little but, bit uh, – it is. It's, it's the atmosphere. The atmosphere of that Yankees Mets game was so fun, and I'm not a fan of either team, but I got cheap tickets, and I was going to go with my cousin, and um, and just the announcer, you know, the oh, way yeah, it yeah. sounded, the old Yankees announcer, and A. Rod hit a home run, and like it was just so fun going to that game, and then um, I went to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, I went to a Durham Bulls game. And I walked in the stadium, and I'm like, this is a fucking baseball stadium. Like, holy shit. Have you ever been there? No. If you ever get a chance to go, it's the coolest stadium of minor league baseball ever. Like, really? it's so cool. It's amazing. They got the Durham Bull, hit the Bull, win a yeah, state. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it reminded me of Camden Yards. Like, it looked like they took the stadium and plopped it right in the middle of this oh, industrial sick. area. And it was all brick and like amazing. It was it was so much better than our stadium. And I'm like, this is the Rays minor league team, and their right. stadium is better right. than the major league team. It yeah. was crazy, but it was a great. It was a beautiful stadium. Like it was amazing, and uh, you just felt like you were at a baseball, game, you know. And then, and that's another thing like is like, that I remember good. hearing back in the day was like, is that in Tampa people do not want to drive 30 minutes to go do anything. No. Yeah. That's another thing, right? You could have a, a great musical act going on, like ah, it's thirty minutes away. Yeah. But in you know other big cities, thirty minutes is that's what they have to do. Yeah. L.A. Oh yeah, it's forty five minute drive over to that side of town. I'll be there. Sit in traffic for but, forty five. But here, nobody wants to cross a bridge. Right. Nobody, yeah. if you don't. Oh well. Yeah, I, that's what I do tell people. I think though. it's knowing that if there's an accident on that bridge, you are screwed. Yeah, yeah, is, <laughs> you are yeah. sitting there for an hour. And it's like, do I want to take that risk for the Rays? Nah. And and we, we are blessed. I always tell people, you know, people that are like, oh well, I want to move. I want to move out of Florida. Florida sucks. I'm like, yeah. oh my guys, we are so blessed here. I love there's it. There's sports teams. There's beaches. There's everything to do. Hence the reason why it's tough to get people to go out to a baseball game indoors when right. you have there's so a lot more many to things to do. It's right. not. We're not in St. Louis where it is about baseball. Right. That, I mean, that was a it was a noon game I went to, and it was packed. I'm talking, you're talking about retired people walking up the steep step, walkers huh. to sit down. And I'm like, wow, these people are, are out oh, here. Yeah. Um, it is, it is tough. But I mean, in the end of the day, I tell people because I have film friends in LA, dude, you, you move out to LA, move out to Atlanta. I'm like, I'm like, no, why? So I can live with five dudes in one place right. and like <laughs> and try to, uh, I'm like, what, I have to become a waiter for the first time in my life right. to like just to pay rent. Like yeah. I hear I here I, I you know I run a business here uh, in St. Pete. I can live within 30 minutes of the beach. I don't have to. I can do what I love. Um, and in the day, it's Tampa Bay. It's a right. beautiful place yeah. to, to do everything. Area. I'll never leave. So the, only, the only negative about this area is a hurricane. And there's too many <laughs> fucking people. Well, I, I mean, I don't really care there's about so that. There's so many people. You know, every, everybody always says like, uh, oh, I, I've never met anybody that's from Tampa, and right. it's always weird. I'm born. I was born in Dill Air Force Base. Mm-hmm. I grew up in Brandon. 
and I went to USF. I've lived in Bradenton, Sarasota for a few years, but I've lived in St. Pete now about seven, seven years now, and it's a tough place to leave. Yeah. And there's no, yeah. you know, it's not, it's, I, you there's know. nothing alluring about anywhere that I've been that I'm like, I want to live here. I'm Except in New York City. I love New York City. New York City, I, I, I but I feel like New York City would be like, after a while, oh. it would be too overwhelming and just too much, and you're just like, oh, I, yeah. I did a week there last year. Uh, the investor for the Wild Man put us up and took me to a Mets game. He does he was, he has like season tickets for Mets Yankee stuff, and we went to a Mets Red Sox game. It was it was still in the pandemic time where like they had you could sit here, all the other seats were zip tied. Yeah. And, yeah. And, um, but I got I did a week there, and it was actually the first time I traveled since the pandemic. And a year earlier, the last place I traveled to was New York City. Right before I was literally on the airplane, and there, you know, Trump was on CNN saying, you know, we're gonna, it's gonna be back to order after in three days, and you know, like everything was getting shut down, canceled. Right. South by Southwest got canceled on my flight. I was planning to go to South by Southwest. Everything got canceled. So first coming back, uh, first trip going to New York City after the pandemic, a lot of the places were not there anymore. I'm like, oh, let's go to this cool bar. I was with my girlfriend. And that bar doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Uh, and you know, going, you know, tra- like traveling around, doing all that kind of stuff was kind of cool. But living, being in New York for like a week, where you didn't have to like rush and do all these different yeah. like sites, but like walking down the street, get coffee, and then coming back, and then doing a couple different things, that was kind of cool. I think what's interesting is like, and I think I don't think people realize is that we can go right outside and get in our car and just drive to Target. Right. Drive to a Publix. Yeah. Drive to anything. Go get whatever we you want. Do about in 15 minutes. In New York City. No. Nope. It was funny, yeah, but uh, my guy, my, my producer is like, I had, I, had, I had said, hey, I think your TV's broken. That next day, he walked down to the Best Buy. Because the, the, there's like a Best Buy right down the street, like like a couple blocks away. He said, yeah, uh, I'm going to go buy a TV. And they had him like, they then they <laughs> delivered it to his, his, you know, his apartment in Manhattan. So crazy. I was like, well, that's different. Yeah. Yeah. There's Same no thing. cars. I mean, there's a lot of cars driving in the city, but nobody like has a car in the city that, yeah. that lives there. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the, it, like, the parking places are like two hundred thousand dollars for a, a year for a parking place. It's just crazy. Yeah. I so, think it would get old after a while. Like I see, yeah, I, I, I can so do it for too. like I can do like in a three month like uh, Airbnb there, lease. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know long term. I you know I even wanted to go out to California for a little bit, and I I like do the because I love I lived on Treasure Island, Saint Beach for so long. I was like, oh, I wonder if I could do that in California, live on Venice and Santa Monica. Uh, but then, like, you've been to, if you've been to Venice in the last five, six years, it's a lot of – it's like a whole homeless community right there yeah. on the beach. And you're like, okay, this isn't Safety Beach. And that's what we – once again, like, you don't realize what we have here oh, yeah. is a really – the beaches, the communities. It's like – Safety Beach is, like, my favorite because not many, not many people know about it. Everybody goes mm-hmm. off to Clearwater Beach or Anna Marie and Siesta Key. And they forget about this really cool area of beach where there's not as many tourists as yeah. the other areas. And it's like a small community. It's a cool little beach town. Yeah. Um, I really what, like. I didn't really care for Seattle either. Um, I like uh, Pike Market. It's really cool. I've heard about it. One but day I'm going to do Seattle. the city, I mean, there's homeless people everywhere. Like you're driving down the street and there's all these tents lined up on the on the, yeah. on the the side of the road. And people just living in a tent right, right next to the interstate. Yeah. Like it's crazy, and everything is so freaking expensive. Oh my god, like it's unbelievable. We went into breakfast, and I had like a little skillet with eggs and sausage and bacon, and she had a little piece of quiche, like that was that big, and it was like sixty dollars for breakfast. And I was like, oh my god, it's crazy. But the city itself, it's kind of like mini New York, with not as many people, and a bit more. it's just it's really expensive. It just sucks. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't really care for it. Um, but I love New York, man. I, I love it. Like it's so fun every time I go there. It's such a great time. Uh, I saw Evil Dead the musical there on oh. off Broadway. Nice. That was so fun. <laughs> but that's what I like about it. Is like you could just go to a show or go do whatever. You could find everything there. The peach is amazing. You know, it's like yeah. that's the little things that I like about it. You know where I was? I went where I was shocked that I liked it so much. Other than the homeless people, San Francisco. Like I, oh, yeah. I, I, I had so much cool. negative stuff about San Francisco, like. But when I went there, I was there for like three months, and I was like, I really like it here. Yeah, you hear a lot of force. I haven't been there yet. I mean, the homeless situation I'm, is terrible. But yeah, I, did you walk I, across the bridge? No, no. Oh, dude, that's like. I mean, I, I I was I was able to like see it. We I took parked at a park it. and we walked. Oh yeah, over no, the I'm bridge. not walking there. Like that. <laughs> it was 
absolutely incredible. Like it yeah. like takes your breath away. <clears throat> man. Like it was so neat. Um, you got Alcatraz like way out. Mm-hmm. There were whales underneath the bridge, like just swimming around. Yeah. Like it was so cool. But I only made it halfway and went back. Was, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm walk. Walk. <laughs> yeah, that was a far walk. <laughs> I think that mile's like I think it's like three miles or something. That's uh, I don't know if it's three miles, it's but it's, it's long. But um, yeah, I got halfway, just kind of hung out, and then. But I loved it. But the only thing that sucked there is the ta- city tax, the California tax, and like I said, the homeless people. You know what's that's weird it. about San Francisco? When we went and we went to the bridge, we did our little walk thing, and then we went to um, they had a fisherman's wharf. Mm-hmm. Did you go there? Oh uh, yeah. Well, so I, went walking, the, I went to the baseball game, too. I'm walking through this place, and I'm like, I feel like I'm at Universal Studios. Like, <laughs> It was so – it was very theme parky. It yeah. It was just kind of weird. And that's but where – that's at the wharf? The Fisherman's yeah. Wharf. Yeah. But there's, like, seals and shit land on the um, side over there. Mm-hmm. Like, it was kind of weird. And then uh, In-N-Out Burger. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I've been there a few times on my L.A. trips. But, um, but, yeah, San Francisco, I was shocked that I liked it so much. San Clemente is my favorite little you guys ever know San, San Clemente is like about an hour I think south of LA, mm-hmm. and I was lucky enough like I worked my first job out of college was producing videos for a lumber company, and they paid for us to drive around filming all these places. And I went back to San Clemente a few years ago. It's this little area, it's like a surf town, it's like untouched. They have like a railroad that like literally runs right through the beach, but it was like it's the coolest little. It looks it's so nice because you have the houses up on the mountains and stuff right on the beach. Yeah, it's like a surf town, and that's that's a gorgeous little area. But I know San Francisco is on my on my bucket list to go, and I, I've really been nice. to San Diego like real the, quick. It, it's like the homeless people is like my only like because I walk a lot in San Francisco, and you just see a lot of homeless people. So the worst place is Portland, Oregon. Man, Have you ever been to Portland? We were. I was there for so I was working the little golf tournament, place. the freaking that new golf tournament. Uh, we went to Portland, and we saw there was a lot of homeless people out there. So weird, and they're just like they're happy homeless. They're yeah. like they got a blanket on the sidewalk and they're playing guitar and being homeless and it's just like <laughs> it's so strange and the people are so weird there they're yeah. all weirdos and they well, got all these they have little recreational weed don't they have recreational yeah they have weed? yeah well, probably we were walking down a street <laughs> we were walking down a street and there's a house like a regular house in a neighborhood and that's where people were walking up and buying pot and i'm like what the fuck is going <laughs> on in the city like it was such a strange place it was beautiful though like the, the scenery was amazing yeah. the mountains and the water and Everything was great, but the people were so strange in that place. And my dad went, I told him, I said, I'm telling you, the people are weird, man. And he came back, he was like, you're right. Like, all these people were so strange. I, like, I told you, they're all like hippie, you know, yeah. like hippies and yeah. just weirdos. Gypsies. I, I didn't like Portland. Yeah. Huh. But uh, one of my favorite places was Raleigh, Durham. It was really cool. That was a fun place. And that stadium was a badass. Um, but... Oh. Another cliche city, Nashville. Like I, I've I, never I, been to Nashville. I, I loved it. I loved it. It's, I mean, it's getting it's so commercial and so touristy, yeah. but I I loved it. Yeah, my girlfriend leaves for Thursday to a bachelor party. Her second bachelor party in Nashville in like six weeks. What? Um, Nashville's yeah, wonderful. it's a big bachelor destination. Yeah. I I've been I've been yeah. in Nashville like three times for there's a big film conference there called FilmCon. I've been there three times. Obviously, it hasn't happened in three years since the pandemic. Yeah. But it was a cool – the whole uh, film Nashville puts it on, and it's really cool. They take you to all these – they have different, like – they have their own, like, um, almost like a Mosey museum, like a uh, big IMAX that they do, like, a night there, and they have these huge parties. Um, yeah. And they have this – it's a huge whole week thing. That's what, I've been up there for those things. And they, they take they, – they took all the VIPs around to, like, the different bars and jazz clubs. Yeah. So that was kind of neat. Yeah, right down on Broadway. That that, that that area right there is amazing. There's another place that like the locals go to, not Broadway. Well, that's why there's tourist there, there, right. there was another place like, oh, I can't remember what did they call it. Like, oh no, no, we don't go to there. We're gonna go down here to this other private little jazz area. Yeah. And I was like, that's kind of neat. But it, it, you know, Phil Nashville has a huge thing. They were they were pumping out a lot of. Uh, they had they had people from all all these big uh, distribution companies there too. They were uh, like Buff- I met Buffalo Eight. You know about Buffalo Way, they're huge right now in indie film, helping do like get, like financing and stuff. And they were there five years ago. I met the guy, the main guys there five years ago. So like, Phil, it's called FilmCom. I think it's supposed to happen next summer again, finally for the first time in person since 2019. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of things. Speaking but, of sports town, Nashville is like they have the Predators, yeah. they have the Tennessee Titans. All they do is a baseball team. And I those, think. yeah, that's pretty real. That's where the Rays can be going. I, I know they yeah. keep saying Montreal again. 
I'm like, they, I'm like Montreal had a team and they didn't support them. Why and, and let, they support them I remember seeing, like, I, I feel like, okay. Montreal's you, hockey, man. Like, I, yeah. I, that's the thing. Like, they don't care about They're like, oh, we're going to get the team back. And I'm like, I remember watching those. You guys had one of the yeah, best players, one of the best yeah, coaches. they had an amazing team. And there. I remember that stadium looking a lot like the race stadium. Yeah, it did. Yeah. On those it highlights. Was, uh, Olymp- um, uh, All I remember is Moises Alou and Joe Carter. Yeah, Olympic Olympic stadium. stadium. Yeah, dude, they had Randy Johnson, Tim Raines. Like, they had a great yeah, so team. Yeah, so in those late 90s, you had Vlad, Felipe Alou. Yeah, Vladimir Alou, Guerrero. Um, yeah. Pedro, Pedro was yeah. there. We got to where the Red Sox got Pedro Yeah, from. Pedro Martinez. And they didn't support the team. Nope. No, but I, like I said, I think Nashville. If they have, if they get a baseball team, watch out. Nashville is going to be like the hub. It's yeah. going to be a big. Actually, hub. Bo went to the uh, Winter Classic there over the week um, when the Lightning played uh, Nashville. Oh, like the, the, the outdoor, college? the outdoor hockey game. Mm-hmm. The, the college, right? Um, but wasn't the Winter Classic college? No. No, it was the outdoor hockey game. Yeah. Um, they had an outdoor I don't know where hockey they, game. Yeah, yeah, they have one every year, the Winter Classic. Uh-huh. Yeah. Huh. Every year they have one. And uh, he went to that. They said it was really fun. It was cool. They put it in like a, a – I think they played in Tennessee Titan football stadium, I think. It's, it is, it's right there on the water. Yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. put it in a big stadium. Yeah, it's right, like, outside. that's right on the water, the Tennessee Titans. Yeah. But like I said, that area is like – like I said, if they do get the baseball team, if they get the Rays, like I think that's going to be like – they have – literally that will be the entertainment – it will be yeah. an entertainment capital. Because like I said, with the music – all they need is movies and to get catch a big following, and then yeah. now they have sports. And I think because I when I go there, it predators this, predators that, Titans here, Titans there, like it's crazy. It's like Philadelphia, yeah. basically like they don't have basketball, do they? I, I, yeah. I don't. I, no, no, but they got they got a million basketball. they got a million college football. And college, yeah. Oh, yeah, college is there. Versus Tennessee, Tennessee. Yeah. Tennessee, Tennessee, Chattanooga. Van- Belt is Vanderbilt. Out, is out yeah, there, right? Vanderbilt's there. So they have Eugene, a lot of. They have, I mean, they have a lot of sports. That's yeah. where, like, when it comes to us, you know, Tampa. I'm like, well, we have all these sports, right? You know, um, but nobody really they, they choose who, who they want to support. There's just too many. Things you know how it was kind of cool about the film com Nashville. I didn't know they filmed a lot of the uh, Ernest movies. Not really? There. Uh, yeah, like uh, one guy I kept meeting there every year was like the was like a banker who helped like. Uh, do the financing for all the Ernest movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was, he, I guess he, he's like, oh yeah, I was at a couple, did a couple cameos, but I helped fund all the, uh, like several of them. I was the banker who signed the checks to do the financing. That's funny. Yeah, yes. that, that was, that was his little claim <laughs> to fame in Nashville. Did, didn't Jim Varney die? Yeah. Yeah. That's why they don't make any Ernest movies. Well, I, well, I, what was I saying now? I mean, a lot of people retire, but mm-hmm. like, that's, you know, like, it's just like the Pee Wee Herman guy. Like, he's 70. Pee Wee Herman's 70 years old? Yeah, it just, he, it was just his birthday a couple weeks ago. I was like, wow. I, I mean, he was around in the 80s. Yeah, I, I, you started adding those numbers. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, he just turned 70, I think, in the last couple of weeks. Now you know somebody in your own age. No, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on Killer Collab Podcast. Ryan Justice, thank you for joining us. Yeah, Chris definitely. Lato. Let's see the wild man. Yeah, it's on Amazon, Apple, Google Play. And if you have Tubi, you can watch on Tubi right now. Nice. Send them some links, and we'll put it in the yep. comments in the work. description. Oh, and I, I forgot to mention that uh, our $50 film school is out. Oh, okay. So if you ever want to make a movie under $3,000, buy our film school. It's 40 bucks right now, and we'll put it in the comments. Description. The what? The description. Oh, in the description. Not in the comments. Sorry, I always say comments. I know. I don't know why. It's in the description. You're weird. Sorry. I am weird. I'm Tony Devin Lauren. Tony D. Thank yeah. you. See you next week.